So, so that's a few examples from uh, uh, JP Morgan. Uh, uh, Gareth, could we turn to you and similar question, give us an example, maybe some context first, what you do and, and a couple of examples, how you deploy LLMs AI in, in your space. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the question. I, I think Chris will be very happy because my central point will be not that AI is coming, but it's already here. And I'll, I'll, I'll speak to that very precisely. But what we do uh, at, at uh, Voya Machine Intelligence is we actually are running a host of equity strategies using AI, dedicated equity strategies. It's more than a billion dollars now. Now that's a drop in the ocean versus the 300 billion plus uh, that the firm manages, but it's growing very quickly. Performance has been very strong. And again, it's direct uh, AI fundamental strategies. That's one thing that we do. The other thing that we do is we are combining that AI with human intelligence in a very structured hopefully a sophisticated way, right? Trying to draw the best out of human and machine, which we can get into. But, but the first part we've been doing, that is running AI strategies, competing against human beings for fundamental investing. We've been doing that for more than a decade and more than three years within Voya. But the super cool thing is the second piece. And that revolution has been kicked off by, you know, the LLM story, uh, which is almost, it reminds me of the late 90s, the killer app concept, where it wasn't the app itself, which was the most amazing thing. It was the fact that it revealed this incredible embedded ecosystem of tech that was already in place and ready to go. And that's what, that's what the LLM story has done. There are a host of really incredible AI technologies that uh, have been ready to go, pattern recognition, uh, sentiment analysis, all the rest of it. And the LLMs have just brought a focus onto that. So we've seen a major transformation in our firm, uh, a, a major revolution in how they're looking at uh, investment management. And it's in two, the final point I make, it's in two, two domains. The first is obviously uh, productivity and efficiency in your workflow. So that's the, the boring stuff, but you know, you, you know you get an ROI. That's automating research, all of that. But it's also the top line alpha generation process. And that's the stuff that we're very excited about uh, bringing to the table as, as well. So, so digging a bit deeper uh, on, on those applications. So can you, can you share similarly a bit more like very practical stuff? So open source, commercial, in-house, outside, um, how do you deploy, whether it's just LLM or the, the other technologies? Yeah, so we, we use almost every if you think about AI as an umbrella term for a bunch of individual uh, technologies, reinforcement learning, Bayesian networks, LLMs, ex et cetera, we use almost the whole panoply because it's very case by case, right? These are tools in a toolbox. You don't want to just have one tool. So to your point, we most definitely already use LLMs uh, uh, to help with uh, reporting, building narratives about particular stocks that are purchased, uh, helping research in terms of very rapidly identifying what might have been the trigger item or news item for a, uh, a fall in the stock price. Maybe you can use that for ESG research. So for research and reporting, already LLMs, uh, in terms of helping to look for predictive patterns in stock data, i.e., fundamental investing on equities and in the fixed income world, we use a Bayesian networks, we use reinforcement learning, we use a host of those technologies in order to do a different thing, right, which is optimize for our performance versus improve productivity and efficiency. And, and similarly, so uh, uh, Peng was talking about the POC level, uh, some experimentation, getting close to launch. Uh, is your stuff in in deployment now, or to what extent it's actually live and feeding it's, the trading? It's live. We have a, we have a, a, a live track record for more than three years at the firm. We have more than a billion dollars in assets across different equity strategies, which are 100% run by uh, AI, uh, as well as, or we're already live in plugging our AI signals into traditional discretionary processes. That is, the fundamental teams at the firm that run their own strategies are now actively using the, the AI signals that, that we produce. And why is that? It's because this is not quant, right? AI doesn't do what quant does. Quant finds a small, uh, small anomalies, uh, uses a whole 
you know, whole uh, uses leverage or uh, a very blunt approach to try to to try to uh, leverage those anomalies potentially that don't exist anymore. Whereas AI does very much the same of what a what a human being can do. Looks at a complex set of set of data. Looks for very complex idiosyncratic patterns in that data and plays them forward without bias or without career risk or institutional imperative, all the rest of it. So this is not quantum mental. This is, this is a, you know, quant is kind of my background and there's nothing I do now that is like a quant factor model.